Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to explain what determines the pace of your hunt and ultimately your kill time and just the overall flow of the hunt. And the thing that determines all of that above is your attack to part flinch ratio. So as most, most of you probably already know, when you do enough damage to a part on a monster, flinch occurs. And depending on the game and depending on the monster and depending on the part that you flinch, monster could just flinch or it could topple over, fall on the ground. Usually for the legs, it's two flinches to get out of the topple. And on the head, it's usually one or two flinches. Again, this really depends on the game and what monster we're talking about, but that's the rough ballpark. This is the whole reason why people want meta sets. They want to do big damage because they do big damage. It's not necessarily that they can kill the monster faster. Of course, they will kill the monster faster by draining the total HP of the monster. But more importantly, it's giving them more flinches and more frequent flinches on the monster so they can topple. And the damage just starts to snowball because of those topples. And this is this is where we're starting to get into speedrun territory where speedrunners are always trying to calculate and figure out what moves and what order of moves and what parts to hit so that they can put the monster into a permanent stun lock or at least try to get them as close to a permanent stun lock as possible, especially because the monsters attack randomly and they're not scripted. That's why they're trying to control the monster as much as possible to decrease the randomness with these part flinches and with, with these crowd control techniques that keep them on the floor the whole time. Now, I know not a lot of you are speedrunners and that's totally fine. Here I'm going to give practical advice as to how you can utilize this major concept of attack power to part flinch ratio so that you can kill a monster faster and on average get faster kill times. So we're just going to look at a typical Rathalos here in Master Rank in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And then we're going to look at a few numbers here. So first is part breakability, that's 4.4. And this is for the Guiding Lands. For most of the Master Rank quests, it's actually 4.6. And you can see that right here, 4.6, like right here, for example. And we're going to look at the part breakability. So here for the base value for the head is 240. So all we got to do is calculate. So 240 times 4.6, 1100. So do 1100 damage and you get a flinch on the head. Now, the good news is because you're watching my video, I've, I've looked at pretty much every single monster and I'm gonna give you the magic number that is all you care about. And that number is 1200. When you're hunting a monster, you're always trying to, in the back of your mind, sort of count how much damage you're doing to the monster. So you can build up to that 1200 threshold so you can get a part flinch and potentially a topple, right? Because this allows you to be more risky when you play because if you know that you're about to approach a flinch, and when you land that hit and you get that flinch, it doesn't matter if the monster can attack you back because he's flinched, he's gonna get knocked back. You're effectively canceling out his attack. This is the only form of crowd control in the game that comes from your weapon. Now, obviously you're not going to be out doing those calculations in your head, so I'm gonna give you a very simple way to figure that out. So the magic number is 1200, right? So all you have to do is identify what your basic combo damage for whatever weapon you're using is. For most weapons, like maybe like Greatsword, is draw slash, sword and shield, it's a one, two with your um, ladder on return. Lancing is like one or two pokes. And that damage, roughly speaking for a non-meta, you know, pro progression gear set, is about 140. But obviously you can go and figure it out for yourself. If you're at a, if you're already at post post end game, that's obviously gonna be higher. But let's just take 140, for example. All we gotta do is 1200, divided by 140. That's 8.5. In roughly 8.5 exchanges, I will get a flinch on the monster. Don't have to count damage. You just have to count exchanges. So monster attacks, I attack. Okay, I, I got my attack in. And you just do that eight times. And you don't even have to exactly count eight times. You can be roughly like, okay, I, I did like about six exchanges or felt like six exchanges with this monster and I hit his head six times. Surely on the next exchange, he's going to flinch and potentially topple. And that's how in the back of your mind, you're kind of keeping track of the status of the hunt. And that allows you to really capitalize on these heart flinches so that you're ready for when that topple happens. You're ready to really dish out the big damage when the monster's flailing on the ground. You can also use this to analyze your fight and improve your build potentially because you know while you're fighting a monster and you feel like you're already on the 10th or 12th exchange and you still haven't flinched the monster yet then you can start questioning your build and your strategies and you can be like am i hitting the right parts is is my weakness exploit even proccing and if it's not maybe double check hit zone values and making sure the part is tenderized is your build just not good enough are the damage numbers that actually appear are they pretty high or are they white and low. If you start to think of your hunts and how you're trying to build damage towards a part flinch and how free and how fast you're trying to build towards that part flinch, your builds will become better, your strategies will become better, and overall your hunt kill times will go down. Thanks for watching.